cos x minus cos x is equal to sin x tan x. I need to show that this is a true statement. Somebody gave you that and they said, is this true? Now don't ignore all this verifying. We're not doing this stuff. <clears throat> We're not using a graphing test. Well, we're just going to do it with good old algebra. So, which side is more complex, the left side or the right side? Sorry? The left side. It's got a fraction. Usually, the ones with fractions are more complex. That's what people would generally say. So, we're going to start with the left side. Okay? So, we have 1 over cos of x minus cos of x. And the right side is. Sin x, tan x. Okay, we have this little line down the middle, which is telling us do not cross that line. You can do whatever you want to either side using all the rules of math that we know, but you can't cross the equal sign, and we're trying to make the left side equal the right side. All right, what do you want to do to the left side? Comment it on there. You've got a fraction, so you've got to put them together. I don't want two separate terms. Make them a single term. What's the denominator? Common denominator. Cosine x. So I'm going to multiply this one top and bottom by cos x. And that's going to give me 1 minus cos squared over cos x. What I just did. Is there any questions about that? This is important. Okay. All right. We have one fraction. We have a one, and we have a trig function squared. What should be like going off in your head right now? Where do you look on your formula sheet? Pythagorean identities. So what's 1 minus cos squared? Sine squared. So now it becomes sine squared over cos of x. Whoops. I want to write two x's. Over cos x. Okay. At this point, you've got all sines and cosines. You don't have any secants, cotans, anything like that. You don't have any, like, Fractions being added or anything like that. We just have a single term. You can't really do anything else, right? We've got it down to sines and cosines. Once you get it down to sines and cosines in one, so one expression, whether it's a fraction or just sine x or something like that, um, you can't really do anything. So we're just going to stop there. And then you're going to have to go to the other side and manipulate that. So the right side is sine x, tan x. What's not wrong, but what do we not like about the way it's written? There's a tan. I need to get rid of tan. What is tan equal in terms of sine and cosine? Sine x over cos x. So this becomes sine x times sine x over cos x. How do you multiply fractions? Straight across. So it's just sine squared x. Over cos x. Oh, okay. The left side equals the right side. And you're done. You have proved that that is an identity or it's true. Okay? That's what you want to do. You manipulate one side until you can't go any further, and then you manipulate the other side if you need to. Is that okay? All right, go to the bottom here. Okay, look at this gong show. Sine x cos squared x plus sine cubed x is equal to 1 over cosecant. So that's just ugly. So, which side is more complex, left or right? Left side. It's got more junk in there, right? So we're going to start with that. So we have sine of x cos 
Word X. Thank you, guys. All right, what do we want to do with that side? What's, what can we do? Anybody see anything that you can do? Oh, yeah. We should factor. What can we factor out? Sine of x, because there's a sign in each expression or each term. So I pull out a sign. And I'm left with that. Why was that a good thing? Co squared plus sine squared is uno. I'll write the times one. You don't have to write that. Okay, so now I'm just down to sine x. Can't really go anywhere from there. We're done. But now we have to go to the other side. I've got a cosecant. Nobody likes cosecant. He's a loser. Or he's just not very nice. I won't say he's a loser. That's a bit mean, I guess. So what do we do with the cosecant? We need to change him. I don't know why I'm gendering cosecant. But we're doing it. What is cosecant? It's one over sine, right? So what this is is one over one over sine of x. What does that equal? Right? You just flip the bottom fraction. So it's one times sine x over one, which is just sine of x. And that makes us happy because it is that. And we're done. All right. Is everybody okay with that? Are we ready to up the ante? Okay. We're going to go to page 628. Or 638, sorry. There it is right there. Look at this thing. Well, that's just gross. Okay. Prove the identity. Draw a line right down the middle. Uh, give yourself some space. Always a good thing when a teacher says that. All right. We're not going to do part B. So we're not going to do this part, the non permissible. So if you want to write into that, I should let's draw a line. OK. All right, are we ready? What side are we starting with? Which side is gross? The left side. Okay, what's wrong with the left side? Tan. I got to get rid of tan. I got to write everything. It's sine and cosine. So what is tan in terms of sine and cosine? Sine over cos. So you write that. So now I have. Sine of A plus sine A over cos A all over 1 plus cos of A. Okay. That didn't really seem to do anything that made us happy. Now we just got a fraction over, like, fraction within a fraction. Blah. Okay. Uh, Ignore the bottom for now. We have a fractions being added in the numerator. Do I want two fractions? You gotta make one fraction. So you have to make a common denominator. What's the common denominator of the numerator? We're only looking at the, looking at the numerator. Cosine A. So this becomes, so here I'll multiply this. This, I'm gonna multiply this by cos A over cos of a. So it becomes cos a sine a plus sine a all over cos of a all over 1 plus cos of a. So right now you're going, you're an idiot, Baldwin, because you just made this crazy more complex than it was originally. 
We got fractions over fractions now. Again, ignore the numerator or the denominator, sorry. Looking at the very top numerator, what is the only thing I could do? When you don't know what to do in math, always try to. That blue shirt back there, see what it says at the bottom? See how it says F it? You know what the F is? Factor. If you don't know what to do, factor it. What can you factor out of the top? Sine A. So if I pull a sine A out of the very top, I end up with that. You know, it's split between that little stupid question there. But. Now we've done, this is our third step, fourth step, depending on how you want to look at it. Are we starting to see progress? Who sees progress? Why do we see progress? This is important. Why are we happy of what we just did? There should be something that's like jumping out at you. Cos A plus one, one plus cos A. Are those the same thing? Yeah. One plus two is the same as two plus one, right? It doesn't matter the order. So those are the same thing. Now, it's a fraction over a fraction. How do you divide fractions? Yes. This is the top fraction, and that's really over one. Okay? So... We have sine A plus one over cos of A times one over one plus cos of A. Does anything cancel? The cos of A plus 1 and the 1 plus cos of A. They cancel. Which leaves me with sine A over cos A. You can leave it like that, or if it triggers in your mind, what's sine A over cos A? Tan A. I don't care how you leave it, it's up to you. Because, there you go. I get to miniaturize this. When I look back up to the other side, one over cotan A, what does that equal? Tan of A, right? Because it's like one over cotan is one over tan. So that just equals tan of A, which you've matched to that. Or okay, thank you. Or you could just write. Sine A over cos of A. Is that okay? That was a long one. I know. These are hard. They're super hard. That's what makes them fun, though. No? Yes? Is it monsooning out? All right, we got one more, and then you're just, we're done. The point here is, though, change everything to sine and cosine. Combine fractions, flip them, factor, do everything you ever have learned in math. Okay? All right, one more question. This guy, this person, this thing. Secant squared x over secant squared minus 1 is equal to cosecant. Which side is more complex? The left side. Okay. You have choices here. We're going to break the rules. What do the rules say to do on this one? Okay, yes. 
But once you're starting with the left side, what would the rules say? What would you be your first instinct here? Do we like secants? No, we'd want to change them to one over cosines, right? However, trig function squared plus or minus one on your formula sheet. Please tell me what that equals. It equals tan squared. So I'm not going to draw a line because I'm going to need some room. So I'm going to rewrite this as secant squared x over tan squared x. Now you can get rid of the secants and the tans. The reason we wanted to do that is because if I did it in the first step, I'll just write it over here. You don't need to write this down. That's going to be 1 over cos squared minus, oops, minus 1 like that in the denominator. Which means you're going to have a fraction over a fraction. You're generating multiple fractions. Whereas this one, I've eliminated that combining step just by saying it's tan squared. So what is secant squared? in terms of sine and cosine. What's secant in terms of sine and cosine? 1 over cos. So secant squared is? It becomes 1 over cos squared over what's tan? Sine x over cos x. So tan squared is? Sine squared over cos squared. Why is this is this looking good for us right now? Not sure. <laughs> Why is this looking good for us? You have a fraction over fraction, and what are the denominators in those fractions? They're the same. So when you flip the bottom one up, what happens to the cos? squares they go bye bye then you're left with one over sine squared now you could stop there but if you look at the right hand side what is the right hand side equal cosecant right what's cosecant one over sine so cosecant squared is one over sine squared so this is cosecant squared x which equals that, okay? So, make everything sine and cos, if that's your default. Start with the more complex side. If there's fractions, you gotta make a common denominator and put them together. If it's fraction over fraction, you gotta flip and multiply, and don't forget to factor, okay? One, three, and four, please. 